So 70 years ago, Aurora redesigned itself around the car and gave reason to rip up miles of streetcars that connected North Seattle to downtown. The competition of this parallel urban highway was too much to withstand for the mass transit network. After the 1962 World's Fair left town and I-5 took all the vehicular traffic, North Aurora was forgotten. Aurora's problems are Seattle's problems. Uh, from 2010 to 2017, Seattle added over 100,000 people. The 50 years prior to that, through boom and bust, the city only gained 50,000 people. Our population has lapped our pace of housing construction. In the 1990s, Seattle created urban villages from Crown Hill to Columbia City, pockets of density that allowed housing construction to maintain the pace with population changes. But as we can see, urban villages can't keep up. Aurora is a part of four North Seattle urban villages, but like Seattle single family neighborhoods, Aurora's lacks adequate supply of housing. So Seattle's solution is Aurora's solution. Uh, Seattle gets a lot out of its urban villages. Uh, I would argue too much out of its urban villages. Uh, they only take up 18% of the land, uh, but contributed to over 88% of Seattle's housing growth. That is an impressive figure when you look at the charts, but as you can see, we're not keeping up with it. Uh, where Aurora's opportunity comes to play is with so many um, underutilized lots, vacant lots, and lots changing hands with sale. Um, Aurora's opportunity is the same, housing. So Aurora rezoned itself from auto-oriented light industrial to residential mixed use. To give you a sense of that, I'm only going to talk about the section that I live in, a one mile stretch called uh, A-Love. The, the recent up zones have paved the way for 8,000 new housing units. Um, 8,000, that's 8,000 new housing units on 50 acres. This is the type of density that urban planners uh, dream for. Vacant underutilized lots give opportunity to create a lot of housing here. Uh, the rapid ride e-line which runs on aurora carries 18,000 daily riders that's the number one route in the state so it makes sense to put housing in vacant lots willing to uh, change hands but aurora has other problems cars there's rightful complaints about thoroughfares which aurora is they're too loud they're polluted and they're unsafe and so why is that cars the number of dedicated lanes and space given to the right of way push all the sidewalks to the limit for safety, which create no safety at all. Aurora's design is underutilized, but how can we solve this? We can either eliminate a lane, uh, or, so take a look at this. This is the existing state of Aurora. So some people would say it's narrow. A lot of people would probably say it's wide. It's definitely too narrow for pedestrians. Uh, but whether we eliminate a lane a median or simply plant trees, development can be done to make this corridor much more pleasant, safer, quieter, and more sustainable. Also, we can go beyond that. Um, again, the width is wide. You can fit a lot of stuff there. So what if we added light rail? Unlike I-5's corridor, Aurora touches the street level with housing and business adjacency. The E-line buses are crowded, a lot of people live in the neighborhoods adjacent to this corridor and light rail carries twice the capacity of a bus and at a higher speed and frequency. Removing cars, planting trees, landscape buffers, wider sidewalks. Can you imagine what Aurora could be? The other opportunity for Aurora is sustainability. Um, we can look in the architecture world at how we can utilize buildings to become a much more sustainable city. So A-Love is ready to supply housing on a great transit line, which is a sustainable practice. The E-Line's success is a paramount to the bus only lanes, which illustrate the opportunity sustainability brings to an otherwise car centric road. With the tallest building heights in the neighborhood, Aurora's rooftops can have a huge opportunity to provide solar. With 1.4 million square feet of rooftop, this can power the new units created here, which will, load, or which will lower the power needs. Mid-rise projects are also ripe for mass timber construction. Each cubic meter of wood stores one metric ton of carbon dioxide. 
unlike hard, concrete or steel, it does not need to be manufactured. It manufactures itself. To give you a sense, these buildings of Aurora of mass timber could sequester 350,000 tons of carbon dioxide. That's equivalent to 875 million miles traveled by car. So what is a new Aurora Avenue? Um, you know, we can talk about land use, we can talk about street design, but I see it mostly as a place. Uh, there's lots of thoroughfares around the world that are pleasant to be in. And I think Aurora could be that. This could be the new Aurora Avenue. Housing, sustainability, solar roofs, high frequency transit, fewer cars, neighborhood servicing businesses and trees. It's ripe for this change in the vacant lots. And we can also preserve lots that currently provide affordable housing. So this is just what that one mile stretch of Aurora can do. Um, imagine if we do it for the whole stretch, what it can do for the whole city. Imagine what your neighborhood can do with its stretch of Aurora. Aurora is one of the biggest opportunities the city has and it's begging for its chance. The forgotten stretch of auto-oriented identity is gone. And with that, a new dawn is here, a new Aurora Avenue. Thank you.